Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Fatima. Welcome, Fatima. So happy to have you here. Hi, Don. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, so I read on your website, say goodbye to exhaustion, overwhelm, and dissatisfaction, and hello to vitality, balance, and energy. Yes, please. <laughs> right? <laughs> That is like the best line <laughs> I've ever read. So what is mineral balancing? So basically our bodies run on minerals. Like I never knew this back in the day. I just thought I was great, do, you know, taking a multivitamin and if I was low on energy, take a vitamin B12 because that's what we always, you know, like right. get advice from like, on the internet. And when I learned about minerals, it was really the curiosity came from premature gray hair. I had premature gray hair since I was 16 and I saw this post talking about um, copper, like a copper imbalance and, you know, other minerals that are like leaving your body. And so your hair loses color. And so that really got me so curious. And so I reached out to the practitioner and, you know, like, Hey, I want to do this test because I was just really wondering, I'm like, Oh, maybe that's the reason why I had gray hair since I was 16. Right. And I wasn't, you know, a lot of people that I talk to usually that becomes practitioners, they they were looking for answers for their symptoms. Mine was from premature gray hair. Yes, I had been living a clean lifestyle for a while, for a long time. And so I never thought I had any symptoms anymore. And so that was just like my curiosity, right? And I learned, I like dove deep into this mineral world, like, oh, every like function in our body runs off of minerals. And if we're deficient, the first thing that we will always notice is low energy because that's how our cells make energy. And I was like, well, I'm not low on energy, right? I'm like, I'm going to have great results when I get my test back. And I got my test back. And at first I was kind of upset. And then I was mad because I'm like, oh, why does this report say that I'm still kind of toxic? I've been living toxic free for since 2010, yeah. right? <laughs> and then I didn't realize when like, oh yeah, duh. Like I didn't really do any kind of detox, although I did lower my toxic exposures, which was great. It was great. It's still great for your health to lower your toxic exposures because then I'm lessening the load of my detox organs. And so now when I learned that, I was like, okay, now I'm like going to try this on myself, right? I'm going to exper experiment on myself. And because the report was like my life story, I was so mind blown by it. You know, it was like, oh, low sodium potassium ratio is related to allergies. And I've suffered from allergies my whole life. I always just say, oh, I have year round allergies. I don't have seasonal allergies. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and basically like, you know, I don't think of that as a symptom anymore because I've been living with it my whole life. Right? right. And then the more I looked into it, I also learned that the more deficient we are in minerals, so the more low energy we are, our self-perception also becomes lower. It's almost kind of like a person who's anorexic, right? Like they think that they're fat or big and they stop eating. Mm -hmm. So it's like that, like our self-perception just like... Like it gets cloudy basically because I guess because our body's not working at a hundred percent. Right. And so it, our body has a very delicate mineral system that if you just take a single mineral and if it is like a synergist, which is like, it makes other minerals go up, then you'll have other minerals will go higher. And then sometimes it can make other minerals go lower. And so it was really, really a very like, I guess you can say like a scientific process. Like you can't just say, oh, I'm low on magnesium. I'm just going to take magnesium long-term by itself. And then you're not knowing that you're messing up the other minerals in your body. Okay. Okay. That makes yeah. sense. Is this just a blood test that you have? No, it's, ac it's actually a hair test. Oh, okay. Yeah. So okay. It's so kinda, explain. Yeah. It's kind of like a biopsy because our hair is a tissue. So every, like our hair grows about an inch. It depends on how fast your hair grows, but it grows about an inch every two to three months. Mm -hmm. So every time, you know, your hair grows out, it's actually also like 
showing what's getting excreted, you know, like, like heavy metal wise, if it gets excreted to our tissues, some of it will come out. Every time there's a metabolic process in the cells going on, it will come out into our hair. Like it's really kind of, it's like a biopsy sample. I learned that in beauty school, which is so funny because I went, I did hair for 30 years, but I remember that, that they called your scalp, uh, the medulla. It was the dumping ground is, was the nickname for it because everything, even an aspirin ends up on your scalp and your hair is obviously growing from your scalp. So that's fascinating. I'm glad that that finally came around circle for me. (laughs) Yeah, and yeah. that's why they you they can use your hair for drug tests, right? Like because it yes. comes out through your hair. And so so if you think about it too, sometimes so people are like, oh, I don't have hair. So you can also use, you know, other hair like facial hair, armpit hair, or your pubic hair. But they say like the hair, the head on the scalp is the most accurate. But you know, obviously if you don't have it. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. That's so They're interesting. Flexible. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. I, you said it's not as easy as just like, oh, I'm low on magnesium. I'll take a magnesium supplement. What do you do then if you find out that you are low in magnesium? What's your starting point? So what we usually do is we usually work. So, it, you know, um, we do different uh, like other minerals that is a synergy, like synergistic to magnesium. Usually it's calcium, like they go up and down together. And so it's always good to, you know, take calcium and magnesium together. And then usually when you also take vitamin D, you add the vitamin K, like there's just so many things. Right, but right. Yeah. You, and, and I think like the zinc, like I'm going to zinc real quick. You know how like during like the COVID thing in 2020, everyone was like, take zinc, take zinc, right? Because mm-hmm. it is great for your immune system. And then mm-hmm. some people ended up kind of like being obsessed just taking zinc by itself. And then they didn't know that it's actually lowering their sodium and potassium levels when you take zinc by itself long-term. But zinc is great when your copper is so high, but we really, like in the mineral balancing world, we really are not doing replacement therapy. Okay. So it's not like, you know, like, oh, you're low on zinc to take zinc. Like you just, we kind of like, figure out what the other minerals are that has that relationship with that certain mineral. And then we kind of like, you know, have, that's why there's never like people and say like, Oh, what can I take? I'm like, oh, I don't want to like, just give you a general supplement recommendation because we don't know what your body really needs. So it's also a great way to not be taking supplements, random supplements in the dark and wasting your money and not knowing if your body really needs them. Right. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, a lot of times you'll have a medicine cabinet full of supplements and it's like, oh, I have this in case I get this. And like, <laughs> you like that. So, you know, I was, I was like that. I was like, oh, I'm going to have zinc in hand. I'm going to have this on hand, you know? And I'm just like, okay, it's kind of like your graveyard of supplements. And now, I, you yes. know, <laughs> I have that. I do. And the worst thing about it is that a lot of it is like from TikTok videos or Instagram, where people will say, take this, it helps with this. And don't forget, you need to take vitamin K with vitamin D. And so, you know, it it ends up like that. And then I feel like, am I just going to stand here for like four hours? (laughs) Just pills, pills, pills. Help, help me. How do we (laughs) not do that? So I go send a sample, somebody looks at my hair and they find out you're deficient. This, 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 then, then what happens? Yeah, and they'll show you, it will also show us the heavy metals that are, you know, getting pushed out into your tissues. And then we can use the minerals, the essential minerals, to push them out gently. Like our body, you know how it's also so big now, like all the heavy metal detoxes and, you know, parasite right. cleanses and all yeah. that stuff. And to me, mineral balancing is really like the gentlest way to detox. Because we're just, we're trusting in our body. Our bodies are very intelligent, right? Right. It knows, it knows why you're holding on to the heavy metals. It knows why you're holding on to the parasites. There's a specific reason, right? It's not just like, oh, you're just crude. Your body just wants to hold on to them. Right. So let's say lead and cadmium, they have an affinity for bones. So if you're deficient in calcium 
and then you get exposed to lead, that's where it will, you know, go. Like, I'm okay. like, oh, there's, there's a parking spot over there because calcium's not there. I'm going to take over. Okay. And right. And a lot of times when people have osteoporosis, doctors are like, you're deficient in calcium. Take a calcium supplement, but, which is not just that straightforward, right? They're not like, oh, let's see if you have lead toxicity because lead likes to be in the bones and it really, you know, weakens, weakens your bones. So is so it before like, you even start taking a mineral or a supplement or whatever, you need to do the detox stuff all first? No, no. with mineral balancing, um, with mineral balancing, you do, you just like do the thing because you're, when you're trying to do a detox first, without making sure your cells have the energy, your liver has the nutrients it needs to actually detox, then you're just recirculating all the toxins back in your body. And that's why a lot of times people feel like crap when they're yes. trying to do a detox. Okay. And also when they don't make sure that their detox pathways, their drainage pathways are open. Like if they're not pooping, to me, I'm like, you need to be pooping at least three times a day, two to three times a day. And like, you feel empty when you're done. And it has to be like a certain um, look, like they have that stool chart mm -hmm. where you have, you know, like it has to be like four, the number four consistency. Okay. <laughs> then that you, then you know that your gut and your colon and all that stuff are working properly. If you're finding that you're not, you're doing activities outside and it's hot and then you're not sweating, that means there's, you know, your drainage pathway is blocked somewhere because you're supposed to be sweating. Okay. That's one, one of the things that I also learned for my report when I saw that. I'm like, oh, that makes sense now. Like I used to work because we have a small farm and I'm the one who takes care of all the animals. And I'm like, oh, this is so nice. I don't sweat. <laughs> <laughs> and not knowing that there was actually something wrong if you don't sweat. Like, duh. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You're like, oh, wow, I'm superhuman. Does that mean, is it, is it your lymph system? Yeah, your lymph system is, you know, and then also your thyroid usually is also sluggish at that point because thyroid also helps with temperature regulation. Mm -hmm. So if you're not sweating or if you're, if you have a hard time tolerating the heat, like, you know, if it's so hot and then you're just like, oh, I feel like I'm going to faint, like all these things that that could be a sign that your thyroid is, you know, sluggish or not working at a hundred percent. Is the toxins that you're saying that you would have in your system, that's all what's going to show up on your hair, the toxins? Yeah. So we'll see the heavy metals and the essential minerals. How do we get exposed to heavy metals? Um, if you're breathing, you're exposed to heavy metals, <laughs> especially now we're, we're living in an aluminum world, really like, you know, like the chemtrails, like just from the in industry, the industrial, in you know, the yeah. industrial industry, <laughs> <laughs> like from like the factories, like all their, you know, right. runoffs and all that stuff. And then you love sushi, you know, that's a great, that's a exposure for mercury right there and processed foods, like high fructose corn syrup. If I remember correctly, like they use mercury in the processing to make high fructose corn syrup might be mercury or aluminum I can't remember exactly but it's one of like it's a heavy mm -hmm. metal that they use but yeah and then um if you're around you know if you used to smoke cigarettes or if you smoke cigarettes even ca cannabis can be high in heavy metals like everything kind of that we do like if you put gas and then there's you know you're yeah. getting the, the fumes from the cars like it's just like very very hard to avoid them unless you live in a bubble. And so really the best way to kind of um, mitigate that is to just make sure that your body, your minerals are balanced and, you know, not depleted. So then they won't have space to go, you know, to replace the lost minerals in your body. And then your detox organs are always working and then it's able to handle it. Right. That sounds so bleak. I, I hate how <laughs> it's just like, oh my gosh, you can't help the world that we're in. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I know. It, are there, are there symptoms besides low energy? You did mention that, but are there like symptoms that 
Okay. Cause you know, like when you're going in your day to day, like you said, allergies, yeah. if I wake up with a headache every day, which I do almost every day, it's not a migraine, but pretty much every day I've got at least a touch of one. Um, and that becomes my norm. That's just Dawn. Yeah. Dawn has headaches. That's just, yeah. How do you, are there symptoms out there that people may have that they don't know is a, is a sign that they really should get this checked out? Um, yeah. So like, it, like you said, the low energy headaches, that's usually, you know, like the heavy metals that goes into your brain, the allergies, even skin issues. So basically it's kind of just like the, like, I don't, it's kind of hard to really pinpoint like each heavy metal symptoms, but there mm -hmm. are, I just don't really like remember them right now, but so it's kind of like, we just have to think about if your body gets overloaded with toxins from heavy metals, even from just chemicals from our bath and body products and cleaners and all that stuff. Eventually when your body can't handle, you know, like they can't detox it as fast as quickly. And so you get overloaded. Like I always kind of um, compare it to a bucket or a rain barrel. You just keep filling it and then it overflows. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's when you start feeling low energy, you'll have gut issues, skin issues, breathing issues, hair loss, like PMS, kind of basically like your body is just having a hard time and it's whispering to you through all these symptoms. And, you know, sometimes we kind of like dismiss it, right? We're like, oh, yes, baby is crying. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I can't hear it. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the background noise of this Zoom thing is really great. <laughs> But yeah, it's really, so it's kind of like they all overlap, right? You're like, oh, if you have gut issues, these are going to be like constipation, diarrhea, bloating, all that stuff. You get that when your, your body is overloaded with toxins. And that's the reason why now, when ever since I learned about mineral balancing, I was like, yeah, this should be the first test that everyone does instead of first going after, oh, I have gut issues. Let's do a test that will figure out what's wrong. And then a stool test. If I have parasites, like, you know, all these like compartmentalized tests when with H the hair tissue mineral analysis and mineral balancing, it works your whole body, including it also helps you process emotions in past emotions that you are not able to process because you were, your body was low in energy. So you basically, your body is just like, I don't have energy to deal with that. I'm going to oh, store it, right? Okay. Once you have the minerals, the energy to do it, it will, it will come up and then, then you're able to handle it. It's like a rewinding of a tape. Remember those cassette tapes? Yes. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> you rewind it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With a pencil. Um, okay. So when you had, we're talking about your baby. So say like I have <laughs> grandkids, you know, I want my grandkids to thrive and grow and, you know, be healthy. And so what, what do you do for this little baby? How do you help this baby from getting all this toxic stuff? So are, the, what are you doing? Tell, tell me what to do. <laughs> For me, with my kids, so I did their hair tasks and a lot of their deficiencies and their toxicities, you know, obviously if they're still little, a lot of them comes from the mom. Right. And it kind of, it's like three generations. So whatever my great grandma, my grandma, and then my mom got passed on to me, then whatever, and then gets passed on to them. Right. And so now that I'm just doing mineral balancing with them, but it's kind of hard to let them take supplements. Right. So I right. just mix it with smoothies. But um, the beauty with kids are, is because they're still little. So their toxic exposures, especially if their their parents have been already mindful about, you know, the bath and body products and like feeding them processed foods and all that stuff. So their toxic load is not as heavy as ours. So we can even like, if they're not keen on eating a lot of vegetables, then there, you know, there's been case studies where it's fine if you're just, if you're good at taking your supplements regularly, it will help. And then if you don't want to take the supplements and if you're able to stick to the recommended diet, I don't like calling it diet, but recommended right. food, you know, choices, 
<laughs> way of eating. Um, yes. Yeah. Way of eating. It's, you know, it will still work for them. For us adults, it's going to be harder to like really fix all the depletion and the deficiencies just with food alone. Mm-hmm. I did it the fir- my first round. I was very stubborn because I was like anti-synthetic supplements and like only food-based supplements and all these things. So I kind of tried to do the whole food-based stuff and just like took some like singular supplements, almost kind of like replacement therapy. And my next um, hair tissue analysis didn't really show a lot of improvement. Although I, you know, although my allergy kind of um, was not as bad, like I wasn't breaking out in hives when I would feed my cows hay and stuff like that, but it didn't really, I didn't really see a lot of changes. So I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to be open-minded and try using like the recommended supplements that, you know, the original ones. And I did that. And the the next, the third one was like way better. I, I eliminated a lot of heavy metals. So I was like, okay, I'm just like, you know, like in the beginning, especially when you're so toxic and you're so depleted, like you want to, if you want to be stubborn and want to, you're fine with like things moving slowly, then okay, we can do it food-based. But if you want to move things quickly, then, you know, just be like, it's fine. You know, they're, as long as you're using, we have like specific brands that we recommend that we know are like bioavailable, you know, like the, the forms of vitamins and minerals they use are easily assimilated by your body Mm -hmm. and whatnot so it's just it's not like the cheapest kind of vitamin b12 like you know like right like what you buy at walmart so now i'm like okay i'm more open to that now because i've seen the results on myself like i finally don't have period pain i used to have periods where i felt like someone was stabbing me from the inside like that was my normal right so every time i would get pregnant even though i had crazy bad morning sickness for the first 16 weeks I was like oh it's fine I like being pregnant because I'd rather yeah with the morning choose your battles than, right yeah, than like getting stabbed from the inside <laughs> <laughs> nice choices we have but yeah it's like, oh, <laughs> right <laughs> and um, it's like I learned too morning sickness is because you're just def- like it's because you're high in copper and when estrogen goes up in our body it also raises up copper and if it's not able to go through to where it goes supposed to go then that's when you're like more in sickness like all these symptoms so I'm like oh that explains it yeah so what do you do then for morning sickness to um, lower, lower the copper so a lot of times they use zinc you know but then if you do have the low sodium and potassium ratio you can't use zinc you basically just have to lower like your intake of high copper foods, okay. you, you know, avocados, chocolate, all the things that I like. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't even know what co- high copper foods yeah. are. The avocado, chocolate is one of them, shrimp. Um, but yeah, it's like, it was funny. I sent that list to my friend and she's like, oh, those are all the foods that I like. <laughs> and now I also realize too, because the more like toxic you are, or, you know, the more imbalanced your copper is, and if you're overloaded with it, your body craves it. And I used to have stashes of chocolate for myself. I hide it from my kids because I'm like, no, it's for me when I get the <laughs> craving. But now I don't have it anymore. So I was like, oh. And then now my latest retest was showing that I don't have any more hidden copper toxicity symptoms so, or hidden, hidden copper. So I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Now I'm not even like wanting to have a piece of chocolate you know, like randomly. So the like, craving's gone. That's really interesting. Yeah, it's so crazy. Yeah. How far in between do you do those tests typically? Um, usually, typically it's 90 days. Okay. But if so, but we don't, you know, some people kind of don't like to do that, but we don't ever recommend anyone to take the supplements for more than 90 days because there's always going to be changes. And um Sometimes if you keep taking the same supplements, you're going to start feeling worse because it's not, you know, what your body needs anymore. And so if you don't want to do a retest every 90 days, 
you just have to stop taking the supplements. A lot of times people will do like every six months, you know, like just to see where they are with me because I'm really trying to um, optimize my health and, you know, I'm like testing it on myself also. Right. So I'm before I was doing it every 90 days and now I'm kind of like making it like every two months. Okay. I kind of want to see like, oh, especially when I'm getting um, detox reactions sometimes like I'm like, oh, I was working out in hives. I want to see what um, heavy metal I was eliminating. And it was aluminum. Like I would break out in hives like for one hour in the middle of the night. And it would just go away. It was so weird. That is weird. And how <laughs> aluminum? How are you getting exposed to aluminum? Um, well, because we have to remember that they, these things that are coming up are all like, you know, like our whole, from our whole life. Like they, because they accumulate in our bodies. So, you know, back in the day, I'm sure like back in the day, I book with in aluminum, like all that stuff, right? <laughs> aluminum okay. foil. Right. When you're, when you go to sometimes parties that are catered, they have it in aluminum trays. Yeah. There's so many ways to be exposed to aluminum. And yeah, it's like an accumulation. Now I'm like seeing that too. I was like, oh, I'm already toxic free. But then, yeah, I'm like, how about like the past exposures we had? Even okay. a lot of medications can have heavy metals. Like there's a lot of antidepressants and um, even some, I would say that, like the antacids and stuff, they can be ba- like fluoride based. Like there's some that's yeah. aluminum based. Like it's just everywhere because it, I think right. they use it because it's, make it right even our tap water is full of chemicals and heavy metals so yeah i know and i have gone down some rabbit holes and then i wish that i hadn't because i most of them are scientific research and then it's like oh so yeah. it's true it's true <laughs> um so as far as food goes i know that they have said that the minerals are just not as abundant in the soil anymore yeah. Yep. Uh, besides growing your own food, what in the world can you do about that? Um, yeah, that's the reason why, you know, you just, you take the supplements that you know okay. your body needs. And we also, we still recommend people to eat seven to nine cups of cooked vegetables, mm-hmm. even though it's not as rich in minerals anymore because our soils are so dead. It will still, you know, it still has some minerals, so it will still help replenish your minerals here right. and there but yeah it's not really like the the best like it's kind of like a slow way to replenish your minerals if you're only gonna do that right and of course you you know you prioritize organic and I know I don't know if you know you know that rabbit hole of the organic food industry <laughs> but um and so I always say if you can if you have access to farmers markets or you know like the CA- CSAs like if you have farms yes. around you and if you mm-hmm. have the shares, you know, and you talk with them, you ask, sometimes they, they don't have, they don't have the organic certification because it's so expensive, but okay. then they actually grow better than organic. They, you know, they, they usually don't really use any kind of chemicals, even if it's improved for organic use. Mm-hmm. Like they, yeah, like some of them have better, like beyond organic, basically. Right, right. Yeah, we're in the Midwest and I bought some different kinds of lettuce from this guy. And he was telling me, he's like, if you ever want to come out and look, it's this is how we do. I mean, he was so proud of not using yeah. chemicals and so proud of his process and that it was all, and I was just like, wow, that gave me hope. Yeah. But I'm in the Midwest, like I'm surrounded by farms. So it's a little more easily accessible for me. Whereas like if you're in the middle of the city and you're exposed to smog and all the things and you can't just have a farm next door, like what is it? I I feel like it seems hopeless. (laughs) What can we do? What can these city people do? Well, they still have farmer's markets, which is great, right? But you just really have to talk to the farmers and make sure you know, like, Hey, what are you doing to grow your food and all this stuff? And that's why they say like, shake the hands of the, the people that grow your food. Right. Cause they will, they're not going to lie to you. They're going to mm-hmm. tell you straight up, right. It's like, if it's organic or not, and if it's organic, do they use chemicals? What kind of chemicals and all that stuff? Right. right. They're not going to like 
lie to you, your face. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> and then we don't want to use plastic, like the Rubbermaid containers and all that. Those are a no-no, which I think I have mostly glass, but I know that you're not supposed to reheat things in the microwave and plastic. And I do that sometimes. Yeah. yeah so yeah. that's, what is that doing when people do that? Cause uh, maybe they hear you're not supposed to, but they don't realize what it's doing. Well, you're just leaching, you know, the chemicals in the microplastics into your food. And I mean, to me also, I know there's other studies who are like saying that, oh, the radiation for the microwave doesn't destroy your food. But then, you know, they have all those experiments. I don't know if you've that one from school where they microwave the water and they use it to water the plant and the plant died. Like oh, it basically no. like just kills, like it kind of kills the molecules. Okay. Yeah. So, um, well, I didn't grow up with a microwave because I grew up in the Philippines. And when I moved here, it was so weird. Like everywhere, the places that I moved to I didn't have any microwaves, so which was great. Like I, you know, I'm not a big microwave user. Even when we built our house, I'm like, no, we don't need to put a microwave in. <laughs> yeah. We just, I just warm up our food on a pan. You know, I know it's like quicker. So if you do want to use a microwave, just use a glass container instead of plastic. Okay. Yeah. What, what other things do you do different in your day-to-day -day than the normal average person? Like, cause there's probably other things that I'm doing that I don't even realize are causing toxicity. Um, and every, so all our cookware is stainless steel and cast iron. Okay. We don't do that. We don't do nonstick pans. Uh, um, we filter our water, but we're in the country. So we're on well water, which is, we test it regularly. So it's really clean water. I wish it was spring water, but, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, as I mentioned, we, I've been living toxic free, low, low tox since 2010. So all our bath and body products and cleaners and all that stuff are all, you know, low tox, like there's no chemicals and all that stuff. And where do you but get stuff you, like that? Where do you get low tox? Not at the um, grocery I, store? It's hard at the grocery store. I mean, a lot of times now there are some that are carrying them, but like, but most of them are also still greenwashed, like seventh generation. I don't know if you know seventh generation yes, before yes. they were, they were a clean brand, but then right. they got bought out. They got bought out by mm. Unilever. And so now they use some really nasty preservatives. So now I don't use that. So yeah, it's I buy mostly online and then like small businesses that are, you know, aware of the toxins. And a lot of times I do third party testing for heavy metals and all that stuff. I do have a like a safer swap master list. Um, I'll share it the link with you later. So maybe you can put it on the show notes. Oh, a hundred percent. I would yeah. love to do that. Cause that's the, like I told you before, a lot of the information that people get is from TikTok or, you know, just random. And we don't know, we're just lay people. We don't know what's real, what's fake, you know? Yeah. And so anything expert opinion, I am all about, yes, please help. Cause sometimes too, um, a lot of times when we're also getting our information from social media, and then usually our initial reaction is like fear, right? Like, oh, now I'm scared. And then you either, you're scared and then you're so stressed out that you either not take action because you're so overwhelmed. Overwhelmed, yes. At, right, yeah. Or you become so obsessed then that to the point of it's unhealthier for you. Like it's unhealthier for you that stress is unhealthier than the toxins you're trying to avoid. Right, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, it's really all about balance. Like we still eat out, you know, but I know that our foundation at home, like where we can control it, mm -hmm. is pretty solid. And so I'm not worried about us eating out. Of course, we're still going to choose like, you know, certain foods and stuff. Like we're just not going to randomly well, we need a restaurant, obviously. I'm like, oh, I know that there's a bucket of soybean oil over there that's rancid <laughs> that they're using. But, but you know, it's like you kind of still have to be able to enjoy yourself. Like right. I don't I don't 
we live in the country, like I said, so I can't just like, oh, I'm going to use that, you know, there's an app or like it shows you restaurants that don't use seed oils. But I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to like make that kind of like a priority because that will not, that's kind of like an added stress. Like that's not going to be enjoyable for me. But I know right. like, you know, that's the whole thing right now, right? Seed oils are so bad for you, which it is because they go rancid fast. They're oxidized. And it's also a point of, it's also a source of heavy metal exposure, by the way, <laughs> the hydrogenated <laughs> oils. <laughs> but Well, the thing of it is, though, is there's, there's like two camps. It's just like politics, you know, where people yeah. are like, no oil, don't use oil. Right. And then you have the other people that are like, chug olive oil all day long, and it's going to help everything in your life. Your marriage yeah. is going to be perfect, <laughs> just olive oil. And that's right. what it's well, just. It's confusing <laughs> for us people. Yeah. Like the key to the seed oils are like in Ayurveda, they use seed oils, but they don't heat it. Right. And then usually they don't buy it in five gallon buckets. Right. So it doesn't right. go rancid. Like you'll usually just buy a small um bottle in glass, preferably, and then in like the green glass. So it does, you know, it helps right. the oxidation like go slower. But yeah, you can there's some seed oils that are Especially if you know, like, let's say with olive oil, if you know it's a hundred percent right olive oil and it's cold pressed and all that stuff, yeah, that that's good for you. Just don't heat it, okay. right? And even avocado oil, a lot of avocado oils in the store are also cut with like other cheaper oils. So if you're able to find hundred percent avocado oil, cook it on super low heat, or you know you just drizzle it, then that's fine. Just don't buy it in big jugs so that it's not, doesn't go rancid. Like that's right. kind of like one of the things too, that are like goes rancid easily. Like I get it. Like, you know, like the canola oil, all the stuff are really bad for you, but there's certain seed oils that you can still use. Just make sure that they're not high heat processed. They're hundred percent what they say they are and don't expose them to, you know, like whatever heat that will oxidize it. Yeah. And see, I never knew that either. Like uh, we get a food delivery service where they send, you know, it's, I'm not going to say the name cause they're not paying me to, <laughs> but anyway, um, they send all the ingredients and then you just cook, but in, in all the directions, next step, heat olive oil in a pan. Everything is yeah. olive oil, hot, heat it up and then put yeah. your veggies in or you roast vegetables drizzle, you know, so olive oil is bad. Yeah. If it's hot, you're not supposed to do that. Uh, I think they have a specific smoking point. So you okay. just have to, I can't remember exactly what it is. Okay. But it's a pretty low smoking point. So you just have to kind of like keep it on the low side. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And you can always use, if you're not, you know, vegan or vegetarian, you can always use ghee. Yes. Okay. I have yeah. bought that before. That's a good alternative. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting. Well, tell people how they can find you. I mean, do you like let people send you samples of their hair like across uh, in the mail or? <laughs> yeah. Well, actually what they can do is they contact me if they want to do a hair test and then I'm going to send them a hair test kit that they send directly to the lab. Got it. So then they sh you know, they're sure that I'm not going to contaminate the hair with anything. <laughs> <laughs> You have all the problems. Send me $500. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so if people want to connect with you and do this, can you tell them how they can find you? Yes, I'm on. So on social media, on Instagram, I'm at Fatima Pagpakan. We're just going to share that in the show notes because it's going to be impossible to spell. Yes, all this will be and in the show you notes. Can, <laughs> you can find me at um, kindheartlifestyle.com or just you can email me at kindheartlifestyle at gmail.com. Awesome. Yeah. I'll put all that in the show notes. So informative. I mean, it just makes you think, you know, don't take anything for granted. Be careful of what yeah. you're eating, you know, just be more mindful, be more mindful exactly. in everything yeah. that you're doing and not fearful. Like we need to use that knowledge as power because I know they say ignorance is bliss and it is right. But then why would you not want to know what you're putting in and on your body, if you know it affects your health, right? Our body, but our bodies are really built great, right? It can detox and all that stuff, but 
once it's deficient, once it's overloaded, it's not going to be able to do its job. And then, then you won't feel healthy. And who wants to live a life that's not full of vibrance and, you know, like right. feeling you're like blah all the time sucks. <laughs> yeah. That's not a way to live for sure. We no, all are here to no. live a full, a full fulfilled life. So right. Yeah. thank you so much for taking the time. I've learned so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dawn. It was a wonderful, wonderful conversation. Yeah. Okay. I'll be in touch soon. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.